on the line. They're off from the outside. There goes Raffaello Ambrosio off stride, Angus Hall. Angus Hall breaks in his final start of his career, also off stride, Raffaello Ambrosio. That gives Nikki Coco the lead. Luke with million dollar buy gets a two hole trip with I look like my mom trotting third on the outside. Here's CR Renegade moving up. After that, it's American High Noon, two back to Pine Bluff. Far, far back and out of it, but trotting is Raffaello Ambrosio and Angus Hall, the distant trailer, 28 and 1, as they trot past the stands. Here comes CR Renegade up on the outside to get the lead now. CR Renegade with Nikki Colco back to second. Million dollar buy trots in third with I look like my mom fourth. Then it's American High Noon. Coming to the outside after the break is Raffaello Ambrosio. Pine Bluff is next. Way back to Angus Hall. They trot toward the half. And CR Renegade leads it. Sitting second perfectly, Nikki Colco. Here comes Luke to the outside with million dollar buy in front of Raffaello Ambrosio. Next is I look like my mom back to fifth, and it's American High Noon and Pine Bluff. 58 and 4, trotting up the back stretch. There goes Luke from the outside with million dollar buy. Million dollar buy is getting a lead off stride. CR Renegade. CR Renegade makes a break now. It's Million Dollar Buy with Raffaello Ambrosio. Up inside is Nikki Colco. Here comes American High Noon. He'll have to go three wide. Three quarters, 127 and three. Midway on the final turn. Million Dollar Buy with Nikki Colco moving through to be second. Dropping back after the break. Raffaello Ambrosio at the top of the stretch. It looks like Million Dollar Buy and Nikki Colco. Million Dollar Buy has got the lead by about a length. Here comes Nikki Colco. Million dollar buy, Nikki Coco. Here's the wire, Nikki Coco. One fifty six and four. Nikki Coco, your Dover Downs, getting the photo opportunity. You can see the numbers there, and there is Nikki Coco one more time. Next to entry, owner and trainer, the Catman doing his magic here in Dover. Congratulations, Cat Manzi, favorite of our own Ted Wycheck, right here at TRN. And here's the photo opportunity and a little interview activity coming in from Dover, a big event of sure. And once again, we can congratulate you. Let's go out to the interview and get a good look and listen to what Catman has and to say. In the last week or so, it looks like he was fit for today, right, Catmanzi? Yeah, he wasn't sure, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, I think the draw set me up to, to be able to win that race. Now, this race was kind of unusual where, uh, you know, the uh, favorites uh, made breaks and there was a lot of movement in this uh, type of a race and were you just content to sit there and just uh, wait for things to unfold? Well you know I would have liked to cut the mile but I didn't know if I could take much pressure having raced three times now in in uh, eight or nine days and uh, so I, I, I didn't mind sitting there but when he started to give it up up the back stretch I wasn't too happy with myself but things did work out. He captured himself uh, in the stretch and really came on strongly didn't he? Well that's the best part of his race he can finish a mile good. Now, uh, he's raced uh, most of the year in New Jersey and now has taken on some of the uh, top horses this uh, late season. Was this uh, planned or was this uh, something that just came by accident? Well, it was somebody's plan, but it wasn't ours. Uh, he, he had his problems. We, we were in love with him early. We thought he was going to be, be a nice horse for all the big races. And uh, he, he ran into some serious problems. And uh, thank goodness uh, Nick Salentry straightened him out and in time to get this one anyway. Well, the one thing that really uh, shows up over the years, whenever sires go overseas, it seems like their uh, prodigy come on. He's the son of Kuman who left this country, and looks like the Kumans are starting to move again. Well, yeah, he's doing well now. Thank you, and good luck to you, Cat Manzi. Congratulations. Nick Selenetri, you know, uh, you've been in all phases of the sport. You've driven horses. You've driven amateur professionally. You've uh, trained horses. This has got to be kind of a high for you, isn't it? This is uh, one of the most exciting evenings we've ever had. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. The horse is named after my daughter, Nicole, and uh, we've raised him, and uh, he's just done very well, and it's... Uh, it's really a pleasure. <laughs> well, I can see the Nikki and Cole. Where's the other Cole come from? It's from uh, Nic her, Nicole is when I when she was a baby. I would call her Nikki Cole, Cole and Rocker, and uh, that's uh, how uh, the name came about. <laughs> well, she certainly has lived up to all your expectations as well as your uh, trotting colt. Uh, what are your plans for him now? Uh, he'll have a uh, couple of weeks off, and uh, we'll point him for uh, January at the Meadowlands, and. Um, go from there and hopefully some of the better four-year-old races next year. 
Now, he had uh, quite an ambitious program here for this month of November. He raced here in the uh, preview, and then you sent him up to New Jersey last week for the Jersey final. Um, uh, I'm sure he deserves this time off, but uh, did it just break that way, or, or uh, how did you plan it? Uh, we had him ready originally for the um, Beacon course in the Hambo, mm -hmm. and then he uh, got a severe infection in his mouth, a oh. severe tooth infection. So it took him close to uh, three months to really recover. Trained him down. I really wasn't going to do anything with him, but he just kept showing us that he wanted to go forward. And uh, these were the last couple of races of the season, and uh, it gave us the opportunity to try him. And uh, the um, I do want to thank... Uh, Mona, Muzz, Liz, Sherry, and George, uh, who are our staff over there, and they've done such a tremendous job help and getting this horse ready, and they've just been tremendous, and it's a pleasure. I remember you mostly for having pacers. Uh, when did you get to be a trotting man? <laughs> um, he was uh, a yearling standing out in the field and had a full sister, and a friend of mine said, you want to buy a couple of trotters? I said, certainly, and that's how we ended up with these two guys, him and his sister. Well, you've certainly done a great job, Nick, and best of luck to you and your staff, and uh, look forward to seeing you many times again in the Winter Circle. Thank you very much.